In today's video, we are gonna talk about a question that a lot of people ask, which is, what is it like to switch from iOS to Android, especially with all these new Android devices coming out? So what we're gonna do is break it down into three categories. Things to know, the benefits and the cons of the switch, and how to prepare for the switch. But where are my manners? <laughs> I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Tech Me Out, if you're new to the channel. Up here, I like to talk about everything technology in different ways from like app reviews, vlogs, pretty much anything in relation to tech. Feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And as you're watching this, you know, you can always hit the like button if you feel inclined to. The first thing you're gonna wanna know is that a lot of the apps that you're used to having on your iPhone may or may not transfer over to the Android phone that you're gonna switch to. So for example, if you use Apple Music, thankfully that is offered on Android so you're good to go there. You don't have to find anything to switch to. Now in reference to like your iCloud contacts and your iCloud calendar events, you're going to need an app to bring those over. So the one that I use is known as Smooth Sync. As you know, I like to talk about Android and iOS, so I'm constantly switching back and forth between the two. Now your iCloud passwords, AKA keychain, go on. It will not transfer over, at least that I know of. So you're gonna wanna switch your passwords into um, something like LastPass or 1Password, which is an app that thankfully is available on Android and iOS, as well as Windows and Mac. Now, if you have passwords saved in Safari, those won't transfer over either, but if you're using Google Chrome on your iPhone, then the password saved in there will transfer over to your Android device because Google Chrome is offered on both. You'll find that it seems like Google plays friendlier with iOS than iOS plays with Android because they're Google-based apps that can be downloaded on both, whereas your Apple-based apps are pretty much only going to be offered on your iPhone. Now, iMessage. That's one of those Apple apps that definitely keeps me, you know, grounded to my iPhone a lot because iMessage does not transfer over to Android. Your equivalent to that would be something like Telegram or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, but then that involves people using iPhones to have to download the app as well. So if they don't have it, you gotta have that conversation to try to convince them to do so. But iMessage is one of those things where unless you've been an iPhone user, you may not know what you're missing out on. FaceTime isn't offered on an Android as well. You gotta get an equivalent app once again, which is gonna be Skype or Duo or something of that nature. But where it gets yet confusing is with your iMessage group. So say for example, I have an iMessage group and someone in that group sends a message. I will not get that message because it still is recognizing me on that device that I have iMessage when I don't. What has to happen is you have to get the group members to start a new conversation so that the phone then recognizes your number as SMS or convert the group over, like we were talking about earlier, to a third party app. Good luck with that. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to do that. Now, AirDrop and uh, Handoff, gone. But if you're using something like a Samsung device, which I have here, which is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, then you can take advantage of Dex, which will be your new handoff, airdrop kind of setup, but it's not wireless per se, unless you're using a TV with the latest Samsung devices. And if you're the type that has used airdrop, especially, you know the advantages of that. And if you do anything, you know, media wise, then you know the advantage of getting those videos and those photos from your phone to your computer like that. All right, now if you're the type that uses the files app, that's gonna have to change as well. So you're gonna have to switch that to something like Dropbox or Google Drive or another cloud-based type of you know, file storage service like that. I know this is a lot of switching if you do choose to do these things, but like I said, the nice thing about the Google apps is that it's available on iOS and Android. You know, if you do bounce back to an iPhone and then bounce back to an Android, it's less work involved after the first go round. Now that Apple Watch, gone. It's best to just switch over to an Android-based smartwatch or to just use an actual Fitbit. I know for me sometimes, even though when I'm using an Android phone, I'll still continue to use my Apple Watch because sometimes we get invested into those activity rings. Those aren't gonna transfer over. And if you have made progress in that or you you know have a little streak going on, it, it's hard to break away. Now, anyone that's invested into the Apple Home ecosystem. Go on. It's a lot of goins up here, y'all. <laughs> Everything is gone. <laughs> it's best to just switch that over again to a Google-based app, which is Google Home, because that is actually offered on iOS and Android. Now this one is dear to my heart, y'all. 
emojis. When you switch over to Android, they don't look the same. They look kind of like cartoons. Like you can download a keyboard that will give you iOS emojis. And the downside of that is that sometimes when you're sending emojis, they may transfer over a little bit different than the way you sent them. So like sometimes it's hard to distinguish if the emoji that I'm looking at on my Android device is gonna be the same when I send it to an iPhone user. And speaking of that, pictures and videos, pictures I think send fine. You won't lose much quality if any at all. Videos? That looks like you sent it from a flip phone. You're better off uploading the video to like a cloud-based service and then sending them the link or, you know, using a third-party app. Basically, natively, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't play myself. <laughs> Which brings me to another point, social media apps. Uh, uploading videos sometimes and things like Instagram, the clarity isn't the same as it is when you're doing it with an iPhone. You're gonna notice the difference in quality. Siri fans, get used to Bixby or get used to Google Assistant. Quite honestly, Bixby in ways is very much smarter, sometimes too smart for its own good. The next thing though, iTunes purchases. Those are not going to come over to your Android device. If you got movies that you purchased in there, you're gonna have to start doing some research and digging on how you can convert those in a way to get them to your Android device. Now, let's talk about the benefits and the cons of your switch what do you gain what do you lose we kind of touched on it a little bit in that last section they kind of overlap actually now that i think about it but one thing in particular that i love on android is swipe it's so much better and maybe if you download a gboard on an iphone it might be the equivalent i don't know i haven't done that but autocorrect on ios it annoys me sometimes i don't have the same mistakes as often when i'm using um, my Android based device. Something else though that I love on Android, and this is for the multitask lovers out there, is that on a lot of Android based devices, you can have a split screen. As far as iOS has came, it has still not done that. I don't get it, I wish it would, because it would just take the whole user experience to a whole nother level, because it definitely does when I'm on my Android phone. And when I go back to my iPhone, that is one feature that I miss the most. In general though, you can do so much on an Android device, especially something like the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra here, which is just packed with features. You have an S Pen, which is a built-in stylus. You're not gonna find that on an iPhone. You have custom launchers, so if you get tired of the look of your phone, you can completely revamp it to make it look entirely different. It has so many features, it's almost overwhelming, but I like it at the same time <laughs> because I can make this phone fit the experience that I want when I want. If I need it to be more catered towards work, I can add an email widget to my home screen so that I instantly see my email inbox. Widgets have finally, you know, came over to iOS the way we find them on Android, but I still don't think the experience is gonna be as evolved as it is on Android. Now a feature though that I didn't realize I used so much on my iPhone until I switched over to Android was the option when I'm browsing like, you know, a long article and I wanna jump to the top of the screen, I just double tap on my iPhone and it instantly jumps. You can't do that on an Android device, at least the ones that I've tried. And I've tried to find apps that would give me that feature and I've been unsuccessful. Now taking it back to iMessage, I love the fact that when I'm traveling, certain aircrafts actually allow you to have free in-flight messaging if you're using iMessage, like Delta, for example, they do it. If you're using an Android-based device, I think they let you use WhatsApp, but once again, that involves you getting the person you're trying to communicate with to also download and have that application. Now this is another small feature about Android that I like. <laughs> And that is when I'm on Instagram and I navigate by accident away from the video and I return back to the video, it picks up where I left off. On iOS, if I accidentally touch somewhere else on the screen, like in the comment section, and it jumps to that, and then I go back to the video, it starts all the way over, and I, I hate that. And something else I would say is good to know is that when you first set up an Android device, it's a lot. Like, it's like changing schools almost, you know? You gotta get reacclimated with the whole system and vibe. And, you know, the core of things is the same, but what you see is not, you know? <laughs> because you have so many options up here, and a lot of the times because those options are so brand new, it can seem like a bit much. I feel like when I first take an Android device out of the box, I customize it a lot more than I do with my iPhone. I, my iPhone, I just really make sure I have my essential apps and my account signed in. On my Android phone, I do that on top of also choosing if I want a launcher, what eye contact do I want, what widgets do I want. It's more 
involved. So yeah, set aside some time. <laughs> now when going a little bit deeper into that setup process, something that I don't like, on something like you know a Samsung device, you'll notice a lot of duplication of apps. And by that I mean you'll have Samsung Notes and Google Notes kind of competing for your attention. And I don't know which one I want, you know what I mean? Whereas on an iPhone, you just have notes. That's it, and you use it. <laughs> but that duplication doesn't happen on all Android devices. If you get something like, you know, a Google Pixel or a OnePlus device, it's more of a stock-like experience, very similar to what you know, you might be used to on an iPhone. But another advantage, though, of Android is the fact that you do have a lot more devices to choose from, a lot more devices. It can be advantageous in the sense that you can find a device that better suits your needs and your wallet. Now I'm sure there are other things to consider, but like those are the main ones that come to mind. But if you know you can think of anything, feel free to chime down below in the comments section. So lastly though, if you decide that this is something that you want to do, you're going to want to know how to transfer your information from iOS to Android. First thing you're going to want to do is contact your friends and family and let them know you're about to be a green bubble. <laughs> I'm playing, but no, legit, make sure you contact some of your friends and family that you communicate with a lot so that they know, just in case there's a hiccup in getting you from iMessage to SMS. Also, like I touched on earlier, make sure you message your iMessage groups. Also, make sure you turn off iMessage and FaceTime. And just as a precaution, back up your information to iCloud and iTunes. Then to get your information from one device to the other, oftentimes when you're setting up a new Android device, it gives you different ways you can go about doing so, so I'll leave that as a per case scenario. But ultimately, I'm sure there are many more differences to consider. These are just the ones that came to my mind. I know I probably went over a lot, but uh, <laughs> I like to be thorough. <laughs> I know it probably seems like it's not an easy process, but I feel like in the end, it can be worth it. Android, as you can see, has its pros and cons, but it's gonna be your own individual needs that makes that final decision that's best for you. But I will say, the deeper you are in that Apple ecosystem, and by that I mean the Apple exclusive features and the more Apple-based devices that you have, the harder it is to make that switch because you put a break, so to speak, in the chain. But I'm curious to know, what do you all prefer between iOS and Android and why? I know I personally use both, um, but my primary number tends to be in an iPhone and my work number tends to be in an Android-based device. But yeah, I'm gonna sum it up here because I think I've said enough and I think Cam is tired of holding the camera back there. So, um, but if you wanna connect with me more, you can always follow me on Instagram or Twitter. And as always, y'all, thank you so much for taking the time out. Let me tech you out.